Hello everybody. In this video, we will learn block diagram simplification techniques or block diagram of operations. Okay. So what's a block diagram? The simplest block diagram is a single block. Okay. Which looks like this. Okay. We have a single block as you can see. Okay. So it has an output. And similarly, it is an output. Okay. That's great. So let's move it here. That's nice. Okay. So output is y of s. Input is u of s and we have transfer function g of s and we know that y of s is simply equal to g of s times u of s Okay, so but this is a very simple block diagram and a block diagram are very useful tools in control theory for modeling abstracting Controlling the systems and different kind of systems linear or nonlinear. Okay, it's one of the advantages is it can be extended to nonlinear systems Okay, let's assume that we have two block diagrams Okay, and also clean that. Okay, so in that case, we have a series structure, okay, or cascaded structure. We have something like this. Okay, that's great. That's nice. Okay. We have y of s, we have output. Let's call it this intermediate variable x of s, and we have g1 and g2. We can have s, but I just wanted to simplify things. A little bit okay so let's call this g2 of s g1 of s okay so let's clean that okay and write x of s that's great okay so let's also clean that y of s okay so how we can compute transfer function which is very easy we know that x of s is equal to g1 of s times u of s Okay, so y of s is equal to g2 of s times u of s. So y of s is simply equal to g2 of s times g1 of s times u of s. So my combined transfer function is simply equal to g2 of s times g1 of s. Okay, so this s domain transfer function is scalar algebraic operation. As you can see, for single link couple single up systems, and if they are linear, you can technically change the order of the systems, which is a pretty amazing uh, feature of linear time invariant systems. This is different. For example, if you have a filter, electrical filter, okay, if you have input, uh, and if you have mechanical systems, uh, for example, if you apply the filter first, then uh, apply it to the mechanical system, or if you apply your input to the mechanical system, then it filter the output, they will give the same operation, which is pretty amazing. And this is uh, limited to linear time invariant systems, but of course they should be also single input, single up. Okay, good. So there is another uh, very important and simple block diagram structure is a parallel structure. Okay, let's do that. Let's draw it here. Okay, so let's draw two blocks. Okay, one here. That's great. And one of them is here. Okay, that's nice. Okay, uh, we have two inputs. Okay, so technically they will be one input. I will show you in a second. Okay, that's nice. Okay, that's great. So I have a summing operation here. I will show you uh, the details in a second. Okay, that's great. So let's do, draw this. Let's draw this and let's draw that. Okay, that's great. Let's close the geometric operation. So this is my input. Okay, I distribute my input to two different uh, transfer functions, but I don't divide it. Even this is u of s, this is u of s. Okay, so let's call it g1 of s, let's call it g2 of s. Okay, this is a summing operation. I simply sum the output of each uh, transfer function. Okay, so let's call it x1 of s, let's call it x2 of s. And its sum is my output. So I, this is called parallel uh, block diagram structure or uh, additive uh, block diagram structure. Okay, y of s is equal to x1 of s plus x2 of s. Okay, that's nice. x1 is equal to g1 of s times u of s plus g2 of s times u of s. So y of s is simply equal to g1 of s plus g2 of s times u of s and as you can see this is my combined transfer function g of s for this parallel block diagram structure so we covered cascaded parallel 
Uh, and now we will cover the most important fundamental program structure because the negative feedback loop. Okay, that's great. So let's roll the negative feedback loop first and then analyze it a little bit more. Okay, so these two block diagram structures, cascade and parallel, there is no feedback. These are feed forward block diagram structures. There is no feedback from the out. Okay, so uh, in the feedback loop, uh, we have structure like this. Uh, we have two, it can be also one depending on the system. Okay, block diagrams. Okay, good. So uh, output of the one of the block diagrams is uh, our original output. But we have a feedback in the sense that, okay, this is like this. This is, okay, going like this. So technically we have now feedback from the output which affects one of the transfer functions, okay? So we have a summing operation here or difference operation. I'll show this in a second. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so it is also coming to here. Okay, let's look like this. It may, it may not be very nice, but it is okay. Okay, so I don't like it. So cut it. Okay, so let's shorten it. And let's draw it like this. Okay, nice. Now uh, let's uh, fill in the structures and to obtain uh, some nice uh, behavior. Okay, so let's call it G1 of S or G of S and let's call it H of S. Okay, in general, uh, we put, uh, we name the uh, feedback loop to the uh, feedback loop H of S, feed forward loop uh, and G of S. This is Y of S, this is U of S, and this is called E of S, and there's a difference operation here. Okay, so this is fundamental, and the feedback, this negative feedback is critical for control systems. Okay, so positive feedback is bad in general, it makes your system unstable. Uh, we can cover it later uh, throughout the class, but the fundamental feedback structure is negative feedback. Okay, let's try to find transfer function from input to the error and input to the output uh, Y of S. So what is error? Error is simply the difference between input and this signal. Okay, what is this signal? This signal is equal to y of s times h of s. y of s times h of s. Okay, so let's first find transfer function from the input to the error. So error of s plus h of s. So what is y of s? y of s is equal to g of s times e of s. g of s, e of s is equal to u of s, right? Okay, so e of s 1 plus g of s times h of s is equal to u of s. So if I find transfer function from the input to the error signal, I will find that e of s is equal to e of s divided by u of s is equal to 1 over 1 plus g of s times h of s. And it is a log back structure. For, uh, this transfer will be important, uh, especially for steady state analysis. And you always obtain something like this, 1 over 1 plus something here, okay? And this is technically the, all of the transfer function multiplied from this point to the this point, okay? So we call the feed forward transfer function. Okay, that's nice. Now let's try to find a transfer function from the input to the output, which is very easy because we know that y of s is equal to g of s times e of s. So if, if I use that, I'll find that y of s divided by u of s is equal to g of s 1 plus g of s times h of s. Okay, so this structure is very similar. Okay, so in the like denominator, we have 1 plus g times uh, g of s times h of s, which means that I need to multiply all of the blocks on this path, okay, in a cascade manner, g, h. Let's assume that I have a different transfer function, call it P of S. This should be 1 plus G times uh, P times H. Okay, so the numerator is composed of all of the blocks on the feed forward terminal, uh, this terminal from error to the output. So it is G of S. So if I put something here, okay, let's call it T of S, okay, this should be G of S times T of S, and in the bottom I should have G times t times t times h of s. Okay, so we will solve more uh, complicated examples to better understand the structure, but you should be uh, paying attention to the fact that this block time structure will be the uh, everything 
almost everything of this course. We will technically develop techniques, uh, analysis, controllers using this block diagram structure.